Okay, uh, this is problem 4-117 from the text by Hibbler. What we have over here is a slab that is 6 meters by 4 meters and it is aligned in the XY plane and it's being supported by three cables. And they want us to find the equivalent force couple moment system that's acting at the origin. So what we're going to have here is, as I said, the plate is lying in the XY plane and it's being acted on by a force system, F1, F2, and F3. Now if this plate is to remain in static equilibrium, there's going to have to be something holding the plate in place. And typically it's going to be some type of support. And if we imagine that the support is at point zero, uh, that reaction support is going to provide, as I say down here, uh, translational static equilibrium in the XYZ direction. So that's going to be some resultant force or some reaction force. And then a couple moment that provides uh, static equilibrium around the three axes. So again, uh, a typical solid or rigid body has six degrees of freedom, three translational and three rotational and in general the reaction set at the support will uh, provide stability about all those six degrees of freedom and that's what we're working towards when we're trying to make these equivalent systems all right so again here's the applied force system and what we're trying to go to is now not looking at the reactions themselves at the support but what the effect of the force system is going to have at the origin so in general these forces are going to have some type of resultant force and some type of moment that's acting at them. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is write F1 in Cartesian vector form. So F1 actually is in Cartesian vector form. It's just has a Z component and the uh, it's six kilonewtons. Now you might notice there's a cable here, but it's symmetric around each side and the force is being pulled just in the Z direction. Now F2 is broken up into this style that we have to decompose the force vector into a Z component, five times the sine of 45 degrees, and the component that lies in the XY plane, which I have called five cosine 45 degrees, and I'm using a, gen a general unit vector. But then that unit vector can be broken down into an X component and a Y component by taking the sine and the cosine of 30 degrees. Now, just by looking at the vector, the X component is going to be in the negative X direction. That's why it is assigned a negative I and the y component is in the positive y direction and the z component is in the positive k direction. So evaluating those we get the F2 vector and you might notice that if we check the magnitude by taking the square root of the sum of the squares we don't get the exact answer because we're having rounding errors by finding numerical values for the cosine of 45 and the sine of 30 degrees. Now the last one is F3 in Cartesian vector form, but in this one they gave us the three direction cosines, so we really just take the magnitude of four kilonewtons and then find the cosines of these respective three angles, giving me my, car my F3 in Cartesian coordinates. Now what we're going to end up with is a calculation of the resultant force, which we have a positive uh, value in the I direction, a positive value in the j direction and a positive value in the z direction. So i, j, and k, x, y, and z. Now what we need to do is calculate the moments that these applied forces will create about each of the axes. So again we can have generally according to the right hand rule we can have positive rotation around the x-axis positive rotation around the y-axis and positive rotation around the z-axis. So looking at the x-axis we see that F1 pointing in the z-direction has a moment arm of 6 meters and that gives me 6 kilonewtons by 6 meters gives me a moment of 36 kilonewton meters and we notice the direction uh, around the x-axis will be counterclockwise or positive. Now F2 passes through the x-axis so it has no moment arm 
so it produces no moment. And the same thing goes for F3. F3 passes through the origin, which by definition goes through the x-axis, and that also produces no moment. Now looking at the y-axis, we again, F1 is 6 kilonewtons, and it has a moment arm of 2 meters. And this is causing a counterclockwise or clockwise rotation around the y-axis. So it's going to come in as a negative. So negative 6 kilonewtons times 2 meters gives me a moment of negative 12 kilonewton meters. Now we have to look at the three components of F2. The x component passes through the y-axis the way it's aligned. The F2y component is parallel to the y-axis and produces no moment, but its z component does have a moment arm, and a moment arm of 4 meters, and it is going to cause, again, clockwise rotation around the y-axis, so it comes in as a negative, so negative 3.53 kilonewtons, that's the z component, times 4 meters, gives me a, a moment of negative 14.12 kilonewton meters. And our last force, F3, as it passes through the origin, by definition also passes through the y-axis, so it doesn't produce any moment. And lastly, we need to look at rotation around the z-axis. Well, F1 is parallel to the z-axis, so it doesn't produce a moment. F2x, again, passes through the z-axis. The z now, F2y, going in this direction with a moment arm of 4, is going to produce a uh, counterclockwise rotation around the z-axis, so it comes in as a positive. The y component is 3.06 kilonewtons times 4 meters. That gives me a positive moment around the z-axis of 14.24 kilonewton meters. And again, F3, passing through the origin, passes through the z-axis. So now, if we sum up the respective moments, we uh, will have the total moments that are acting around each of the axes. So the x-axis only had the one component, so it's 36 kilonewton meters, and you can see I have it drawn positive here. Again, by the right-hand rule, imagine your thumb being aligned along the x-axis and your fingers would wrap this way, which is the counterclockwise direction around the x-axis. The moment around the y-axis is composed of two components for a total uh, magnitude of 26.12 kilonewtons, and it's negative, which is producing clockwise rotation around the y-axis. So again, imagine your thumb aligned along the y-axis. The direction of rotation is the opposite sense of the way your fingers would curl around. And the last component, the z-axis, is 12.24, and it's positive. Now what we have over here is the resultant force and the moment, and the resultant force is 0.23i plus 5.06j plus 12.36k kilonewtons. And for some reason I'm just realizing it now, I will have to go back and correct it, but my uh, picture <laughs> shows the z direction in the wrong direction, so the resultant force should really be up this direction. And in general, the moment is going to produce a vector, a three-dimensional vector, which now has a positive x component, a negative y component, and a positive z component. And if you put your thumb aligned along that vector and rotated your fingers, that is the general rotation that that force system is trying to uh, produce around the origin. <coughs> now, uh, excuse me, that is the actual solution to our problem. But now, there, of course, there's another way of calculating the answer. And in this respect, we could calculate the moment about O using the cross product. And in this case, we would have just defined R1 plus F1, R2, uh, R1 cross F1, and add to that the cross product of F2 cross F2, and add to it the third cross product of R3 plus F3. Now, our, looking back at our picture, uh, we can see that the R1 vector has an X and a Y component and no Z component. The R2 component 
And these are the locations going from the origin to the point of application of the force. Let me go back to one of the pictures here. So this is the origin, and this is the point of application of F1. This is the origin, this is the point of application of F2. And F3's point of application is at 0, 0, 0. And that's what I'm showing here, so that R3 cross F3 is not going to have any value, so I left it out of the cross product showing it here. And this is the way it would be represented, and once it's calculated, we get these answers, uh, which are identical to the moment axis back here.